What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So all this week that I posted last week, we got to test and check out the season six Vessel of Hatred expansion. So now that the embargo has been lifted, I'm finally bringing you my review of the campaign and my thoughts, what I liked about it, what I disliked about it and everything in between. So let's get right into it. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is give a big shout out to the devs because by creating and taking a brand new class and introducing into the game something we haven't had before, especially in Diablo 4, um, with addition, like bringing back elements from previous Diablo games like Diablo 2 and Nahantu, an area that is in Diablo 2, and kind of enriching its history at the same time by creating a new class and bringing this backstory together and how the Spiritborn uh, will work in Diablo 4. Hats off to you guys because if you guys did play the Diablo 4 campaign when it released or if you got to play it a couple seasons later, the campaign was probably unanimously one of the best parts about the game. And I think everybody thoroughly enjoyed it when it comes to the characters, the villains, right? You as the hero. And of course, the cinematics were absolutely fantastic. And the devs do not stop here in season six. The campaign by far was very, very enjoyable. I was wrapped in and immersive because like it just was something brand new, something fresh, right? Something fresh to the game with a new class. You get to experience all these new things in a brand new created story. Again, with the cinematics, the cinematics do not sell short here or do not fall short by any means whatsoever. They absolutely blew me away. And some of the things that kind of happen throughout the story just kind of have you on this emotional roller coaster, which I think is just really, really cool and enjoyable. So when the game releases and you guys see this video, make sure to play through the campaign and play through as the spirit born. Next, one of the biggest things during my playthrough was is i adjusted the difficulty a number of times okay the difficulty in this game has four different base difficulties before you get to torment and that's kind of your end game uh difficulties you're not really going to get there however i did get to touch on you know i played parts of this the campaign through all of the different difficulties from normal all the way to, to penance and i can say that the the difficulty adjustments are actually really, really good. World Tier 2 was basically hard mode, and then Penance and uh, Expert were much harder and much more difficult, especially at the lower levels, okay? So unless you get, like, an early power or something that can really, you know, give you a nice power boost into your character, the game was kind of difficult, and you were kind of slugging around with some of these monsters. So I played the majority of the uh, campaign on hard, which I felt like was very very enjoyable it moved at a very very good pace i was able to defeat you know the minions fairly quickly you know and then like the elites were a little bit more difficult and then of course boss fights were really enjoyable on the hard difficulty now uh i did get my character re like rather put together around 30 so i i did up it and get a chance to kind of fight some bosses and things on expert which was just in fine like just fine it took a little bit longer for some of the fights to go but it was still very enjoyable so for all you players that are checking out this before vessel of hatred releases uh anywhere from hard to pennant is fine expert felt like a really good sweet spot but if you want to move at a very good pace i think just playing it on hard is just fine by the time i got to the end of the campaign i was level 60 so doing everything that you have to do you will max out your character and that was just playing it on the majority of the time on hard so um in addition to this you know, the campaign did take me six plus hours to actually do. Now, I know that's kind of crazy because the previous campaign was, I think, somewhere between eight and 12, depending on how fast you did get through the content, which is, is totally fine. Now, it, I, I say six plus because I'd have to go back and look at the exact number, but I did watch like every cut scene. I was, you know, listening to every piece of dialogue. I wasn't skipping anything. You know, I was just talking to everything. Now, I wasn't doing any additional conversation, so I only did the main conversation part. So there's, you know, all those different questions that you can ask NPCs in the game. I didn't ask all of that. I just asked the main ones to progress the storyline. But even with that, I listened to the full conversation without skipping. I watched all the cutscenes. I did all of those things, and that's what kind of made it take longer. 
I think if you don't want to do that and you just want to skip through everything and just kind of rush the story to get it done, then you can do that. It'll probably take you, you know, sub four hours probably or, you know, something somewhere around there, um, especially if you're just kind of moving along in a party and just kind of crushing the game. But I did enjoy the length. It was really, really nice. A great part of the camp, uh, the campaign was there was great breakpoints. So if you do really want to take your time to enjoy the new story or the not the new story, but I mean, it is new, but the added on addition, because remember, guys, this does continue from our original Diablo 4 uh, campaign storyline. So this is in addition. OK, so it was fantastic. Great breakpoints. So if you want to. You know, do that and then maybe go do some stuff with your friends and then come back. There was really great breakpoints in so that way you can do that and really enjoy it. I highly suggest that you guys do that. All right, next on the campaign, a few of the things that I did not like, okay? A few of the things that I didn't like was, again, and this may just be a quest line thing that comes with how the devs design quests and side quests, is there's a lot of going back and forth which i really dislike as far as consistency and just kind of accomplishing multiple things at the same time so for instance you would start a quest line and then you'd be like here go to this collect these items come back talk to me go here collect these items come back talk to me go here and do this come back talk to me and it was just back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth um, as opposed to like maybe on some quest lines where it's like, I need you to go do ABC. Once you complete ABC, then come back to me and it advances the, the, the quest line in a much better way. So that was probably one thing that I really didn't like um, about uh, some of the quests through the campaign. It really just felt like I was, you know, playing this like ping pong thing back and forth, back and forth. And it was like very quick things. And that's why I say it can be. You know, just you can do A, B, C and then come back and, and have a dialogue with the NPC as opposed to like, here, go fight a small pack of monsters and collect 10 items and then come back and then you're done, you know, or go here and talk to person A, then come all the way back and talk to me, then go back to this other city and talk to person B, then come back to me on a whole different other city and talk to me again. So those kind of things I really didn't like. So if I really had to like nitpick, then that's probably the biggest thing I would do as far as the campaign. But that's later in the campaign after you get through the majority of it. However, everything else leading through the campaign felt pretty smooth and ju it just kind of flowed as you continued going along. So that's probably one of the biggest issues that I did have with the campaign. It just did not feel at times like I was kind of in this flow i was just kind of like doing these uh, i don't know like um ticky tack or what you want to call it like little silly quest parts which really could have just been summed up and just done in a much better way um next probably the other thing get out of the way dude next probably the other thing i would say that i didn't really dislike about the uh campaign is that you know it just seemed like we didn't get a big enough power boost as you were going through. Um, I, I'd have to go back and really look at the previous uh, story from the Diablo 4 before this expansion. And I know that a lot has changed in the game, but as you like go through, you know, there's big moments, right? And you complete this big moment and you get these really nice rewards. And even getting those rewards, it did not feel like a significant power boost as if I was advancing to the next act or next portion of the quest line as you're continuing through. You know, in, in the first one, you're going to act one, two, three, four, and five, um, and it leads up to Lilith and you got major power boosts there. And it just felt like, hey, I got these items. Now I can go on to act two because I'm strong enough to do act two. And I just didn't feel the power progression or the power creep to my character until I was already like 50. Once I hit like 50 and then I had like four powers for my build, then I felt like, oh man, I'm really crushing now. So it just did like the items just didn't give me a big enough boost as I'm going through. Um, and it, this did not matter which difficulty that I played on as well. So it doesn't matter what difficulty you play on. The items that you're going to receive are just going to be based on what you're doing in the campaign. So I really wish that there was a, a feel of impact as you go through the story and advance through to kind of like push the envelope as you continue to see what happens because it's 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 an amazing story and things just keep you know 
you're on the edge of your seat and things just get like more difficult and you just want to feel that like that power like you're getting this boost in order to compete with the campaign itself if that makes any sense uh but yeah that was probably my only other really like nitpick in the campaign otherwise it was absolutely fantastic guys i really do wish that you go check this out when the can when the the expansion releases definitely play through the campaign it is fantastic i thoroughly enjoyed myself i mean again it was an emotional roller coaster and there was just things that you felt through there and you got connected to these characters and again hats off to the devs for an amazing backstory incorporating an existing plane in the Diablo world with Nahantu and bringing in a brand new class uh, that kind of collaborate together, which made an amazing story. So hats off to the devs for that. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I advise you guys, whoever watching this video to make sure to go play the campaign first when the expansion releases on October 8th. And yeah, give me your thoughts guys after you go and play check out uh you know come back to this video comment down below i will release a full 100 playthrough of the campaign as soon as the embargo is also lifted for that so i will do that and that way you guys can check it out if you want to play right along with me so thank you guys so much for watching like the video comment down below let me know what you guys think and thoughts maybe you guys have some uh you know suspicions about what's going to happen in the story i know this is just a review so i can't reveal too much and no spoilers so uh yeah just let me know kind of let me know what you guys are thinking of what's going to happen and uh yeah comment like do all that good stuff subscribe if you're new and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace